I am so excited. I just got these in the mail. They are brushes, mini brushes, and they are D Artistin Shop. They're for watercolor, acrylic, and oil. And as you can see, they're tiny. So I have a round and the sizes are one, zero, two, three, and four. A long liner, same sizes, and a flat one and zero. So as you see, they came with lid, well not lids, these little plastic covers, and that keeps the brush On this video, I'm going to demonstrate what each brush looks like when you use paint with it. The first five I'm going to use from the 12 new tiny brushes that I bought are round brushes. So they're organized according to size from zero through four. So the first one, which is a zero, the tip, let's try to get that in there. So you see it narrows. It almost doesn't even look around, it's so tiny, but you'll see. Before I use brushes, I always dab them in the paint and I always wondered why. And after doing some research, it's simply because you don't want the paint to stick to the brush. It makes it a lot easier to clean. All right, so there's a, a, a line, what it looks like. Let's just kind of do a ziggly, a ziggy line. And then you want to brush, rinse out each one and the water gets clouded pretty quickly. Though actually what you should do is dab on a paper towel first, but my paper towel is pretty dirty, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, this brush is a number one and I've loaded it up with paint. We're going to do this line again, a little ziggly mark. Actually, I will do it properly wipe off the excess and then rinse this in here so it's nice and clean and then I dab it on my little cloth there so you see the tip this one is a number two and it's very fine it's hard to tell the difference actually in the brushes but when you're painting and you need various sizes you can really tell the difference so in that respect, it, it's very helpful to have a variety of tiny ones. All right, this is 3.0. And this, we're going to do this. I used this one today for the first time. It's a little thinner. Here's a painting I did. You see those lines right there? Those, the wires right here. That was the brush I used for this. And the one in the distance. I wanted it to be just a little bit smaller. So I used the smallest brush that I had, which is this one, the four. And actually it looks bigger than the one above, but it really isn't. So that's the round brushes. Next, I'm going to demonstrate the flat brushes. I only have two, a zero and a one. And as you can see, a flat brush is just that. It comes to a straight, flat end. And between the two of them, they really don't look very much different. But you can see the one on the top is just a little bit more narrow. So we'll see what happens here. So this is the zero. See how much wider that is? And then you can also, with this, you can use the side of it. I used that flat but this on the side makes a much more narrow. And the same thing with when you're drawing letters, you can do it on the side. And let me show you what happens to you. You'll get very frustrated by this. I know I have many, many times, but you'll see the brushes separate. And one reason what you need to do with that is just when you finish using them, you wash them off, just use your fingers and pinch them together. And when you're painting, if they come across, the problem is usually because you don't have enough paint on the brush. So this is going to be the number one. The first one was the zero, and this is the number one. That's sideways. You can see it's just a little bit wider. 
the side pretty thin. I'm going to do it flat so you can see, and now I'm going to do it on the side. It doesn't look the most beautiful, but you get the point with that. Again, you want to just rinse this off and get it nice and clean so it's still dripping a little bit, and then dab it on the towel just to get the excess water. Then again, you want to pinch the brush so that it's nice and shaped the way you want it to be. I need two fingers right now. I'm holding the camera, so it's kind of hard to do it, but you see what I mean. The last five brushes are called rigor brushes, or some people call them a line brush. It's just a long haired brush and it's much longer, let me close in, than the typical brushes that you see how they're very short. And you use them for long lines. And then if you ask, you know, sometimes people ask what's the difference from a liner brush and a, a rigor brush. I put them in the same category because I use the same thing. Uh, what is it? Let's, let me do this first. See that, let's do a long line. It holds more paint, at least for me it does. And it's just, the tuff is longer, that's the end of it, called the tuff, than usual. And they can hold more paint and water at the same time instead of like the short brushes. And a lot of times I'll use it to make a lot of uh, brush marks like on um, like grasses or on trees. but I really, I really like the liner brushes. And then that was a number zero. This is a number one. Get a close up again, that's very long. And you can see I'm dabbing it in and it holds so much more. So here is a, a thin line and here is a long line. And again, it just goes on forever because you can pile on so much paint. This next one looks kind of crazy. It's bent. I think it's bent from the packaging, but I've seen some people's brushes that just end up getting bent just because they use them, wash them so much, and they still go kind of crazy with them. And then here we go. And see what I do as I use it, I start out on the tip up here, let me get some more paint. Um, I start out and then I start applying more pressure. Let's see if I can show it from here. And it just keeps depositing paint. It's really a, a wonderful, wonderful brush when you need a long line like I did with that. I probably should have loaded up on more paint and used one of the line brushes for that because instead I used a round brush, but I, I was doing some other things with it, that's why. All right, this is a number three rigor or line brush. And again, watch how I hold it. And I apply it further down on the brush. As you see, I start on the very end and at the beginning, I start using the tip and that's how you're able to do such a wonderful long line. It works real well when you're applying it in a like a scenery where you have a fence and you need a long line. So here I go, I'm dabbing it again. Here's my single line. And then we're going to start with the tip and press down a little bit more. I didn't put enough paint on as you see, so I'm gonna turn the brush over. It's just a wonderful brush. Okay, so looking back at all of these, you have the round, the flat, and the rigor or the line brush. And you can see the different lines that they make. And they also will hold paint differently or apply paint differently depending on the pressure you apply. Because you see here, I did kind of flick marks up and it, so it was a harder pressure on the bottom down here and then up on top it was thinner because I just kind of flicked it. These are also really wonderful to use if you're painting trees, just wonderful because you have the long branches that go. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. Check the resources below because I have all the names of these where you can buy them. 
and you'll just have to check out check out the link and where it takes you on what the cost because I'm sure they change over time depending on when you're watching the video.